So today we're going to chat about the importance of ground blinds and a couple of reasons why I feel so strongly about um, getting the ground blinds in and exactly how long does it take uh, for a deer, a whitetail deer, to get comfortable to a ground blind. So the number one thing that we're going to talk about today is just the seclusion of a ground blind. Now, there's a lot of, a lot of you know, controversy on this topic about uh, being able to just pop a blind, blind up and, um, you know, go into it and hunt it that evening and get away with it. Now, just like anything, that situation may happen, but that's not the majority of what happens. And especially in a high-pressure state, guys, is the, the, the eye level of, of a white-tailed deer is probably the most important and overlooked and taken advantage of, if you will, uh, portion of the hunting process is people, folks just do not appreciate the um, intelligence level, if you will, of the white-tailed deer. Now, um, nothing against the uh, mule deer, but out west, it's a it's a different situation um, as far as mule deer. I've personally set blinds up on the way out to hunt on the uh, you know, ridges overlooking food sources or, you know, whether that was with a uh, gun or a bow, um, with clients when I was out there, um, that's a whole different world and it's all pressure related. It's uh, acreage versus pressure and it all equates to low pressure. Now in the whitetail world, uh, back here, what, what we, you know, teach, practice and preach, um, this is a very crucial step but not appreciating the intelligence level of the deer. I think that it has to be brushed in. You have to take the time and and be able to um, brush, brush that blind in, whether that's a ground blind um, as a permanent blind or that's a pop-up blind. I, um, I brush in all of my uh, blinds, ground blind, permanent ground blinds included, such as the octagon, octagon that you've seen, um, you know, that we recently have. Um, so that to me is a strong point. I do not feel that it's a set it up that day and get away with it. Now, the second thing that we're going to talk of is this. The only situation that I properly use that is is a in a kind of a run and gun last minute uh, ditch effort as far as you have to have something because of wind change. But what I recommend doing is if, if you're in a situation, perfect reason that we're having this video today is this weekend on the Michigan youth hunt. Um, I had, you know, a couple of the boys and we had to, we had to split up and, you know, I took, uh, one, one way and someone else took the other one, you know, the other way. And we had to come up with a, a strategy because of the wind. And I, I, I see what happens is, is folks just set the blinds up and they take the wind, um, the wind equation out of it and you just hunt it because it's in the right spot and you just, forget about the wind just hunt that old that old uh, theory that I wish would have never hit the industry um, but that is the equation of not being able to relate to the deer and know know the eye level and appreciate the the um, intelligence level of that and then also thinking that you can just get away with it and then it becomes a, a comfort zone for us or or a uh, it's the it's the easiest way out not the smartest way so now, the first thing is, is, is no, I don't believe that it's a, you know, just set it up and without brushing it in. And the second thing is, is can you do that? Yes, you can in a gun setup. I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise it. I don't advise it in a archery setup when you have to be in that 20, 30, 40 yard window. I don't advise that at all. Um, in the Midwest, like I said, down where low pressure or pressure is lower, um, in the corn field, brush it in with the corn. Um, there's all different sorts of debris that you can uh, brush these blinds in with. Um, but at that point, if you are brushing it in on a, on a, in a cornfield, you're obviously on the destination. And if you're tuning in from down in the Midwest, um, you're probably, you know, you get, uh, you know, you get in tune here with some of these um, the videos that I do that all relates to high pressure. And the reason I say that is, guys, if you take the high pressure mentality, and you focus that attention or you, you appreciate that attention when you hunt in somewhere such as the Midwest and you don't 
set these uh, blinds up on the uh, in a cornfield, let's say, or the edge of the cornfield, or a food plot in the cornfield, and you still you still transfer these high pressure mentality when it comes to like a, 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 a pop up situation, and you don't do these things, your success rate will be much higher, and it'll be so much easier to get in um, in and out of those locations. What I see happening is this, as I see happening, the third thing we're going to touch on here is this. The ground blind is a very powerful tool, but what I see happening is, is guys that either are hunt, hunting in the, in the high pressure state with them or the guys that uh, are the hunters that go to the Midwest, we all want to see deer. We all want to be on the action, not within the action, not in the travel patterns. We all, you know, the, it's, a, it's a fad in the industry right now with food plots. Everybody wants to be at the point of the destination feed location and not at the point of impact on the way to them. And the blind is the last step that can overpower a food plot. And the reason I say that is this, if you can, or if, you're, if you are in a state that can get away with a little more pressure than what we can get away with in high pressured states, the ground blind is what will tip that, tip that over. We'll, we'll take that last step and push it over into a pressured situation. What I mean by that is this, what I see a lot of is I see a lot of folks that live in, let's say, a high pressured state, and then they travel to the Midwest or a lower pressured state, Kansas, Illinois, Iowa, and they get into those situations and they take the pop-up with them, or maybe even someone that they're hunting with, whether that's an outfitter, whatever the case is, already has these locations set up. And it's a five-day hunt, and we just throw everything at the, the wall as fast as we can throw it and they and you you know they believe that the the, the easiest way to show uh, people critters or the fastest way for you to see a mature buck when you go out of state and hunt is to hunt the destination feed locations and that could not be farther from the truth so what happens is is these blinds are placed on the destination destination feed locations food plots agriculture and you are now not only um, you know, you are not, not only press, pushing your success outside of your five day window, because what happens is, is I feel that it's a seven, it's about a seven day, seven to 10 day, whether it's a high pressure, low pressure and high pressure, it's obviously like two weeks, but at least it's seven days. And, um, to, for a, for a mature white tail buck to get used to that blind. And I don't care how well you brush it in going back to the first couple of uh, topics that we hit on here, I don't care how well you brush it in, it takes about seven days at least for a mature buck to get used to it. So you do the math. You take these and you put it in a, in a on a situation because it's a last, last ditch effort, whether that's here in a high pressured state, or you take that mentality and you take it to the Midwest in a low pressure state and it takes seven days. Well, most days, most hunts, down there are five days or most vacations that are taken are five to seven days and now you're out now you just push that that uh, success the opportunity of success out outside of your your window so as a recap yes you can yes you can um, use the ground blinds I highly recommend using them but yes you have to brush them in this is not turkey hunting the turkeys uh, you can put it up in the open field and I've killed many of birds. I have many of clients that have killed birds out of uh, at 10, 15 steps out of a blind that has no brush around it. In the mature whitetail world, that's not the case. So yes, you can use them, brush them in. I feel strongly that it takes about seven days for a, for a mature buck in any pressured state, any low pressure or high pressured spectrum to get used to that. And keep that in mind. If you are placing that on the destination feed location, when it, when should you activate that that uh, that hunt when should you give that hunt a green light so the last thing we're going to talk about is this i strongly feel if you have a ground blind option and you're in an agricultural uh, setting and you have the opportunity to hunt a destination feed location in your trail cameras and everything is showing that these deer are there i strongly recommend taking one tip set the set the blind in that location don't hunt it or have it set there prior to when you're going to be there and hunt. Ship it down to an outfitter. Ship it down to your buddy. Ship it down. Go down. Um, even if it's out of state, try to get there. I know that's you know sometimes completely impossible. But try to get there and set those up. It's no different than setting a tree stand up. Where I'm going with this is 
set that up, have it so the deer are used to it. Because what it takes is it takes a, a white tails mentality is they have to not only get used to the blind, they have to get used to not detecting anybody in the blind as far as as far as scent. They're, it's it's uh, it's not just an early season mentality that they have as far as going downwind of that blind. That's a huge myth that I hear uh, that you know bucks don't do that until the rut. That's a huge myth. Um, and I've had clients ask me that you know we should be out sitting on these destination feed locations because they're still in their summer patterns. And the object is is to keep them on that pattern as long as you can possibly do that. And one of the biggest ways to interrupt that is to one, hunt on your destination feed locations, two, implement a ground blind on there. And that ground blind, the visual of that ground blind, not the not the pressure of you bumping out of a tree stand maybe that they're used to, but the visual of that ground blind starts that seven day process of getting used to it. And they'll go downwind of it, they'll get in a little bit closer to it, and they have to have that comfort zone and if you try to implement that into it like a five-day hunt let's say or a weekend situation on your property here in a high pressured state you're going to to uh, not have a very good outcome on that and be very disappointed so why are we where am i in this location here and the reason i'm on this location is because uh we're the screening is right here and the uh the box blind that we have is right up here on the hill I'm 125 yards from it. I hit it with a rangefinder this week during the boys' uh, youth hunt. And the box blind is right right in that window right there. And 125 yards and you cannot see it. So the rule of thumb is uh, brush them in. Be respectful. Take into consideration the deer mentality, the mature whitetail mentality. Be respectful of that. Your, your, your chances of success are much higher when you do so. And this right here, 100, 125 yards, if you cannot see that from 125 yards, you are on the right path instead of it being in this screen right here where most most blinds are, are set up 